so now we're on to the second pillar of object-oriented programming, inheritance. And this is actually one of the most used and probably one of the most powerful um, pillars of the three, just because it gives you a lot of flexibility and allows you to really um, organize your code in a way that saves a lot of space, time, and effort. So um, what is inheritance? Well, think about the logical term first of all. What it means to inherit something. It means to be given something by a predecessor. So for example, um, you might inherit certain traits from your parents, like your eye color, or your hair color, or your skin color, um, your height, your weight, your build, all these different pieces. They're all genetically given to you through your parents. Well, inheritance and programming really isn't that much different. So we'll set up a class, and we can call that class, let's say for example, the parent class. And that parent class has certain traits, attributes, and behaviors that may be given to its child class. So for example, if I have one class, looks like this over here, and we have our class one, so let's call this class A. And let's say this is the parent class. Sometimes the parent class is also called the base class, because it's the base of the whole relationship. And then we might have another class over here, call this B, and this would be the child class. Sometimes this is called the subclass. And essentially what this means is that the child inherits all the attributes and behaviors that from the base class that the base class wants to give it. So you, for example, don't inherit every trait of your parents but you do have some of the traits. The same can be said for um, a child class to a base class, or a child class to a parent class. Um, some of the traits, attributes, and behaviors will be given down to the base class, or to the subclass, but not all. We as programmers get to decide which ones the parent will give to the child, uh, as opposed to real life where there is no choice, it just happens naturally. So how are we actually gonna use something like this? What are we gonna do to uh, implement something like this. Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, we build our base class just like we would build any class. And then all the work, all the special work to make the child class inherit from the base class is done in the child class. And that way um, it, the child class knows that the base class exists, but the, the base class or parent class has no idea that the child class exists at all, nor does it care. As far as it's concerned, it's a negligent parent. It just has certain traits, it has certain abilities, and that's all it has. So let's go and let's do a quick little example. Um, and just to really illustrate something like this, I'm just gonna quickly erase all this. And we're gonna do a simple example of a computer store. Now a computer store sells computer parts. So think of like Canada Computers or Tiger Direct or something like that. Um, so the store is going to sell what we call parts. And the parts are going to have certain attributes and behavior. So it might, it might have like, let's say for example, a manufacturer. It also might have a SKU or the barcode. And it might have um, a description of the item. Just make that short. And it also might have a cost. What functionality might it have? Well, let's just keep it simple. Let's say that it has um, one subprogram that gets the data in the form of a string. So we'll just call this get data. And what that'll do is that'll return all of the data in a nicely formatted string. And now let's say, for example, that part has a subclass of all the different parts. So there might be a CPU part, a hard drive part, um, all these different things. So just as a demonstration, let's do the CPU first. So the CPU, what does it have on top of all of these traits? Now all these traits may not definitely go to the CPU. That's for us to decide as programmers. Um, but for all of these ones, it will for this demo. Um, the CPU will have its own information, such as, let's say, the speed of the CPU. So let's 
let's do a double speed in gigahertz. And it also would have maybe a uh, number of cores, int num cores. What functionality it has? Maybe it has also has something similar to the get data. Let's call it get data as string. String get data as string. And it's not going to have any return value. Or sorry, it's not going to have any parameters. So that's a CPU, but there might also be another one. Maybe there's a hard drive, which follows a similar kind of style. Maybe it has a capacity. So let's say um, a double capacity in gigabytes. And maybe it also has a speed in RPMs. So let's say double speed. RPM. And again, it probably has that same get data as string function. Get data as string. And we'll just close this off so we can see exactly what's going on. Now, of course, these two are both going to inherit all the data from part all the data we specify to inherit from it. Um, do they inherit anything from each other? No, not at all. Think of these as like siblings. You don't inherit any properties or traits from your brother or sister, nor do these. So all of your traits come from up the chain. All right. So there's no horizontal movement or no lateral movement, uh, rather. It's all vertical movement up the chain of uh, uh, genetics, so to speak. So this is how we set up the basic design and structure of something like this. But how do we actually put this into code? What do we have to think about while we're doing this type of stuff? Well, uh, before we finish this off, I want you to think about it like this. Whenever we describe these things, we call this an is a trait. Is, is a. So I can say a hard drive is a part. A CPU is a part. RAM is a part. All these different pieces. So because they follow this is a relationship, I can use this inheritance model. Now that being said, later on through your career in computer science, you'll find that there are other design techniques that um, would uh, maybe not require but uh, benefit from using inheritance even though they don't follow an is a relationship. Uh, but for now and all, for all intents and purposes at this point, you can pretty much guide by this rule. So why would we ever use inheritance? Well, really for two reasons. Code reusability, first of all. So if we have stuff that um, is constantly uh, rewritten or anything like that, by using this base class mentality, if we make the change in the base class and all of the subclasses use that, then that means that we only have to make the change in one spot. Kind of like the reason why we use variables. So we don't have to change every single number or value. Every time we want to make a change, we just change it at the variable. And then that propagates through everywhere else in the program. Um, now, obviously, this also uh, decreases the problem or the possibility of creating uh, multiple, multiple implementations of the same code. Now, you'll see here in this demo, we have two get data as strings. But you're going to see in the implementation that they're going to, they're going to vary a little bit. So that kind of is a necessity for this demonstration. The next piece is something called code extensibility. And this is the second reason that we use inheritance. So what it does is it allows us to take the original base class and essentially extend upon it. So this is very useful in applications where you have a basic foundation of something and you want to possibly add to it later on. So let's say, for example, you had a library. In the very beginning, libraries had nothing but books. Nowadays, you go to a library, they have DVDs, they have music, they have everything, um, even digital downloads. So these are all extras that added on to the basic borrowing component that you could do at the very beginning. But by this design, you could just extend from the same basic functionality. They all still have a lot of the same information that is shared in that base class. Um, fixing a bug in the base class will then propagate down to all the subclasses as long as they're using all that code. So this is all about extensibility and reusability. So on the next 
module, we're actually going to show how to build this.